Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of plane and descriptive geometry. So in this video we're going to look at how to locate the edge view of an oblique plane and we're going to apply it to a cut solids question where the solid that we're dealing with is going to be a pyramid. So this video follows on from our last video which was how to locate the edge view of an oblique plane and how to find the true angle of inclination of our oblique plane to the horizontal plane. So here we can see our setup, here we have the elevation and the plan view of our pyramid which is going to be our solid and we have the vertical trace and the horizontal trace of our oblique plane. Over here we have a 3D version of exactly the same thing. Um, you can see here we have our solid and we're going to just add in our oblique plane cutting or slicing through it. Um, now when we're dealing with a solid that is a pyramid or a lot where each of our corners or generators are going to a single point we have to deal with this differently than as if we were dealing with a prism where we have one view of our corners where the corners are seen as a point view so if you remember from our previous examples each of our edges in our plan view we could see them as a point view and if you have a situation like that you can use your horizontal sections method so like our water level rising up um, whereas if you have your edges going to a point like so, like in a pyramid or in a cone, we're going to use, need to use our edge view method for it. So this is exactly the method that we're going to use in uh, this example here. And what that edge view method basically is doing is taking our solid like that so, and we're going to look at our oblique plane as if it's a single line or as an edge view. So you can see we're moving ourselves around so that our edge view of our oblique plane slices through our piece revealing the top surface here and the bottom surface and you can see if we just take a close look at that our oblique plane appears as an edge as a single line and our horizontal trace here appears as a point so that's what's going to give us the direction to look in in order to locate the edge view of our plane so there is what we're trying to achieve. How do we do that um, in our 2D version here? Well, we need to look along our horizontal trace and like we said, see him as a point view. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to draw in our X1, Y1 line, which is going to be perpendicular to our horizontal trace or perpendicular to our viewing direction. We're going to then project the points of our solid labeled here, one, two, three, four, and the apex zero up into our auxiliary in line with our line of sight or parallel to our horizontal trace. So here we can see because the base is on the ground, it's going to be on our X1, Y1 line in our auxiliary here. Likewise, we're going to project our apex up along like so, and we're going to measure back two views and to our previous X, Y line for our apex like so, and stepping it off to complete the auxiliary of our pyramid. So there's our pyramid completed like so, um, and we just shade them in just to complete them. And we're going to just fade out some of the lines just for ease of use. And the next thing we want to do is draw in the edge view of our oblique plane. Now, the way we do that is we first of all locate a point on our plane that we can transfer through our views. And if we go to our 3D view here, we can see the point we're going to find is going to be a point on the vertical trace here like so. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to take our point P here like so on our vertical trace and the reason we take it on the vertical trace is because we know that the vertical trace is located on our vertical plane or the back wall here um, in our elevation and we know that when we look at that in our plan view from above that point is going to be located on our XY line on the back wall. So here we can see point P in elevation so when we project him down into our plan view here he's going to be located on our XY line. Remember the XY line in our elevation represents the ground and in our plan view represents the back wall. So that's point P located in our plan view. So we can then project him up into our auxiliary, again taking our heights from back two views, so our front elevation, and transferring it across here to locate point P. You can also see I've continued my horizontal trace along here and that gives me the point view of the horizontal trace in my auxiliary so I can just join up the two to give me an edge view of my oblique plane. So that's going to slice my piece giving me the top half and the bottom half. The top half is the half that I'm going to remove here and you can see in my 3D view that's exactly what we've done. We've looked, got an edge view of our plane, there's our point um, and there's our point view of our horizontal trace and we're just going to remove the top half like so 
and we're going to then try and project back and locate our cut surface here in our plan view and our front elevation. The way we do that is going to be by labelling up our points, so where our plane slices through each of my existing edges, we call it A, B, C and D. Again, very handy to label up our points, it makes it very easy to follow. And what we're going to do is we're going to project them back to our views onto the edges that they're crossing. So A here, for example, is crossing the line 0, 1, so we can, can project them back and there he is on 0, 1, locating A in plan view. We do exactly the same with B, C and D giving us each of our points which we can simply then just join up together. So there's A, B, C and D giving us the completed plan view of our object. I'm just going to shade that in just to show that I have it and I'm just going to fade out these lines which have been trimmed. Now when you're drawing your object you can just draw in your lines very light to start with and then you can darken in what you're going to keep afterwards then with say either an inking in pen or just a heavier pencil. So that's the plan view completed. Now we want to project them up into our um, front elevation and locate and complete the front elevation. So we do that using exactly the same method. Point A is on the line 0, 1. So we project them up onto 0, 1, locating them in elevation. Same with B, C and D like so. And it's just a case of joining them up A, B, C and D, giving us our completed um, cut surface here. And again, we just fade out the part that we're not keeping, um, so we have our completed base of our cut solid. Now, one last little point here. When it comes to locating, say, the likes of points D and B here, they can be quite tricky to find because, because our line is coming up here, you can see the line 0 and 2 is quite steep. So depending on how steep this line is here, you may it may be easier or difficult to locate point B. If this is very steep, if this line is any way inaccurate at all, maybe moved a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, it's going to push our point up higher on the piece. So it's very easy to make um, an inaccurate mistake with that. So a one way to avoid that is, rather than projecting straight up from plan like so, and running that risk, what you can do is, you can go back to your auxiliary view here, and take the height like so, so the vertical height, measure it with a compass of say D, and then we just mark them off from here like so, giving us point D. We can do the same with B, and that will give you our point there like so. So that's just an alternative method for transferring the heights of each of our points. And remember, our front elevation, heights in our front elevation, are transferable to our auxiliary. So that's how we found a point P. And the reverse can be said, we, if the height D here can be the same as the height D here. So we can use that to build up a bit more accuracy into our drawing. So that's how to locate the cut surface on a pyramid using an oblique plane. So using our edge view method. Um, our next solid is going to be using a circle of revolution, so the likes of a sphere. Um, so all I can say is thank you very much and stay tuned for more videos.